All right, let's talk steam engines. There's a lot of different steam engines, but there's basically three designs. Some of the designs go back to the 1880s, 1890s. They're made up until 1940s. This is about a 1930s style. There's three basic designs. And forget that some are by electric and some are by fuel, like this. This is the simplest design and the least expensive to make. Basically, it's this. You have a piston that goes back and forth. And on this block, steam comes in and comes out this little hole on the bottom. This thing has a hole on this side of the piston and a hole on this side of the piston. This side is always vented to the outside, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay? So steam comes in this hole on the bottom, pushes the piston out. As the wheel goes around, the piston tilts. This is coming in, and it now vents the upper part of the piston. And then as the wheel keeps going, it goes back. Steam pushes it back out. This comes in, it empties it, steam, and so basically you have this block with the two holes, one with steam and one venting, and then you have this cylinder with a piston in it. The, the seal is kept between these two by spring tension. As this nut is tightened, it ensures that this stays together and the steam doesn't leak out. But what that does also is it causes friction. So these are very inexpensive to make. They're the simplest design. They're limited on the amount of power they can generate because there's a constant friction. Okay, one step up. This machine is a little Czechoslovakian machine. Now, the difference on this one is, you see it's got two, two rods. One goes to the piston, and one goes to this pin. This is called an eccentric. This funny part here is called an eccentric. Let's see if we can... How's that? Oh, yeah. What this eccentric does... It moves this pin, which really isn't a pin, it's a valve. So the steam comes in, it pushes the piston, the piston comes out, this rod comes out, or this valve comes out, and then when it comes around again, now it's venting the piston to the atmosphere. When it gets up here, steam comes in, it pushes. So now, it's the steam working against the piston on one side. It, it's always pushing one way. But it's a lot more efficient. You can develop more power. There's, it's a lot lower on friction than the other, other style, than the inexpensive style. So this one gives you a constant movement in one direction. The next step up, since I have limited room here with my tripod and all that, let me see if we can do this. Okay. This one, as you can see, it has an eccentric also. The difference is this one, in one position, the steam goes on one side. In the other position, the steam goes in on this side. So it's always pushing one way, one way, one way, one way. And then the, ex the water vapor, the, what's left of the steam, comes out that's not used, comes out here. So this is a much more powerful engine because you're pushing the piston both ways. It's a more efficient use of the steam. And these eccentrics, another thing they do is, if you notice, this moves, but the, this stays in position for a while. 
stays there, stays there, now comes out, stays. So that allows more time for the steam to go into the piston. And that way, once again, it, it's more efficient because I can get more steam in there, more energy. And just look at it, the steam is energy. So the more energy I can get in here, the more I can use to drive. Let me slide this over. It's a lot easier than moving the tripod. Uh -oh. What's neat about these little widgets you can get these things to operate different things. They have there's one set that has milling machines, table saws, hammers, all different things that you can get. It's the adult the ultimate toy for adults and kids. Now we covered the three different types. The oscillating, the one side, the both sides. There's one modification on this style engine. Let me move something around here again. Okay, here we go. This is basically the third style engine. It didn't come with a chimney, so I made a homemade chimney for the thing. i got to get a better way to hold it on. This is a, a pushing from both sides. But this is unique. And when you have an eccentric on here, when you have it on these other machines, this will only go in one direction because of the way this eccentric is p positioned. You can't get it to go in the other direction. It'll only go in one when you get it all steamed up. This is an upgrade, sort of, of this, this engine. It has two eccentrics. So you can get it to go in one direction. Or I can do this, and now it'll go in the other direction. And if you put it in the middle, I don't know if you can see that little rod. The little rod doesn't move. If I go this rod back here, I don't know if we can see. It. Let me see if I can break something. The rod that goes in and out for the steam, you can see it going back and forth. And when you throw this in the other direction, it's the same thing, it goes back and forth. When I put it in the center position, Ah. Be nice. In the center position, the rod does not move. This is basically the same way a steam locomotive operates. I think they call this a Johnson valve. But on a steam engine, you want to go forward, you want to go backwards, or when you're in the station, you want to idle. And this, this lets the thing run. It should have a stronger detent than it has. But it lets the engine run and there's no chance that if somebody opens up the main steam valve up here, <coughs> the engine won't run because it's in a neutral position. Then you can either go forward or backwards depending on how it's hooked up to the wheels. But anyway, that's the three basic designs of the steam engines. And usually it also affects the price. The simpler ones, like the old Eight, <clears throat> late 1800 design. This is a Whedon. This is an Empire. This one's a Jensen. This one is a uh, this is German. And this is a Czech machine, which was in the 70s. But no matter what you get, there's going to be the three type. And the more complicated, like this one, the more expensive they are. Because there's more parts Oops, this one. There's more parts, so it's just more expensive. It's the way it is. So that's a little information on these things. Uh, how they're fueled is another topic. You can either use 
uh, pellets. Uh, you can put, if you have one that doesn't have holes like that, you can put sterno in it to operate. For my check engine, I made this to hold the fuel. I can see I burned some green sterno in there. This is a very expensive piece. That's a lie. No, it's really cheap. I got one I made out of an Altoid box. But anyway, so you can either get the pellets, you can use sterno. But the basic operation is those three designs. I hope this you found informative. This machine used to have a whistle in this spot, but I made an adapter so I could have a pressure gauge in there. We're building up steam. Let's see, we're close to three pounds. Well, let's see if we can do something. There we got the buffing wheel is spinning like crazy. Drill press is going like crazy. We can put something in there and oops. Now normally if you use fuel they'll run about 15, 12, 15 minutes, something like 10, 15 minutes. This one's electric, so on electric ones, you have to always watch your water level. I don't know if you can see it where the, there's a line right in there. I don't have a pointer here. But you got to watch the water level because if you, if the water level goes down, it's possible that you can overheat it and unsolder all the joints that made this thing one piece. This one even has a... This opens up. You can put some cylinder oil in there. And that forces some oil into the cylinder to help lubricate it. Which is also on the real steam engines. Remember I said with the eccentric it'll only go one way? It's trying, but it just can't do it. That's the way it wants to run. This little spinning thing is a, a governor on a real one. As the balls go out, it would close the valve down so it would regulate the speed. In the old days on a steam engine, if they're saying they're running balls out, that means the balls on the, on the governor are all the way out. That's as fast as the machine can go. In this case, it's just something to look like the real thing. Like I said, this machine is a little more expensive than some of the others. It has little cups on each of the moving parts to put oil. Electric ones are a little nicer because you don't need to worry about fuel. This one also is missing a chimney. I made this one out of some copper, old copper pipe I had laying around. They're supposed, to, most of them come with a chimney that looks like this, but we don't care as long as it's got a stack on it. Well. That's the steam engines, and that's the story of them, and I'm sticking to it. Happy steaming.